Welcome back. This is part two of 3.9 triglycerides. This is going to be our next science understanding. Liquid triglycerides can be converted into triglycerides of high melting point. We need to explain the role of pressure, temperature and a catalyst in the hydrogenation of liquid triglycerides to form triglycerides of high melting point. One example of this process is in the manufacturing of some margarines. These may be produced by a reaction known as a hydrogenation reaction. And this occurs for typically plant-based oils. We can see here an example is sunflower seed oil. Hydrogenation converts liquid triglycerides, what we call oils, into triglycerides with a higher melting point. We can see below a general equation for this hydrogenation process. The key thing is the presence of a carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond. This can react in an addition reaction with hydrogen. So the hydrogen, we can say, adds across the double bond and one hydrogen atom bonds to each of the carbons. This reaction occurs with a number of conditions. We can see here we need a catalyst, which is typically nickel. We have heat as well as high pressure. And the resulting product we can see now has become saturated. So now it only consists of carbon to carbon single bonds. In real world applications like the manufacturing of margarine, it's not necessary to convert all the carbon to carbon double bonds into single bonds. So usually partial hydrogenation is carried out. This can be carried out by altering certain types of conditions such as temperature or the length of time that hydrogen is passed through the oil. Um, these can be controlled carefully so that only some but not all of the carbon to carbon double bonds are hydrogenated. We now have an example question. Draw the structural formula of the product when the following triglyceride undergoes hydrogenation. We can see in this uh, start of the equation, we've got the presence of three carbon to carbon double bonds. We also have the presence of three moles of hydrogen. So we can expect that each of these carbon to carbon double bonds are going to undergo an addition reaction with hydrogen. And in doing so, we are going to convert this unsaturated triglyceride into this compound here which is now saturated. In terms of what hydrogenation does, it decreases the degree of unsaturation within a triglyceride. If we decrease the degree of unsaturation, this in turn increases the melting point of our triglyceride. This is because the molecules themselves can more closely associate as those kinks that are produced by the double bond are actually removed. And in doing so, the molecules are going to form stronger dispersion forces. This is then going to increase the melting point as well as the boiling point of our triglyceride. It's also worth to note that hydrogenation has a very small or negligible change to the molar mass of the triglyceride. So this isn't going to be the determining factor to the change in melting point. For the next science understanding, triglycerides can be hydrolyzed to produce propane 1,2,3 triol and various carboxylic acids. Identify and draw the structural formula of the alcohol and acid or acids from which a triglyceride is derived given its structural formula. Because triglycerides can be classified as esters, we know that esters themselves can be hydrolyzed through a reaction with water. This hydrolysis can occur under two types of conditions, that is acidic conditions as well as alkaline conditions. In regards to acidic conditions, we will have the presence of acid, so we can see here the presence of H+. We know that the addition of water is going to help break the bonds that were formed to produce our ester, so these bonds in black here. Over to the left, we're going to form our alcohol, which is our propane 1,2,3 triol, which is shown here. And over to the right, we can see that this is going to form three of the same carboxylic acids, which is shown here. In regards to alkaline conditions, this is going to be in the presence of hydroxide ions. So the hydroxide ions again are going to break these bonds here. It's going to form our glycerol or propane 1,2,3 triol. But instead of forming fatty acids or carboxylic acids, we know this is going to form carboxylate ions. And these carboxylate ions can be thought of as soap ions. And this is a good segue into the next component. Alkaline hydrolysis of triglycerides produces carboxylate ions which are both hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions. You'll need to be able to explain how such particles form micelles and solutions. 
and explain how micelles can dissolve and move nonpolar substances through an aqueous medium, or vice versa. So by taking this carboxylate ion, or what we can think of as a soap anion, we can see that there are two major components or two major parts. The first component here is what we call a nonpolar hydrocarbon tail, and a term we use to describe it is hydrophobic, which means it is water-fearing, or it does not interact with water. Over to the right, we can see we have this carboxylate anion group, and we typically refer to this as the ionic head. This head is hydrophilic or water-loving. Nonpolar substances such as grease and oil are typically hard to remove through the addition of water alone. So we typically add a cleaning agent such as a soap or a detergent to assist in its removal. How do they actually go about trying to assist in their removal? So in the middle here we can see we've got a non-polar substance like grease or oil. In terms of the soap ions, what we see is that they align themselves as we can see below here. We essentially have the long hydrocarbon tails all pointing into the nonpolar substance itself. Because keep in mind this section here is nonpolar and hydrophobic. This is going to form strong dispersion forces with the nonpolar substance. Surrounding our structure, which is what we call a micelle, we then have the presence of water. And water is going to form very strong attractions with the ionic head of our soap ions. And we can see that in red here. The type of attraction that we have is called an iron dipole bond because it's an attraction between something that is actually charged, so this O with a negative charge, to a molecule which is polar. And specifically, we would see this O with a negative charge attracted to the hydrogen end or ends of a water molecule. The ability for water to surround these micelles allows for the removal of these nonpolar substances from a particular surface, and that could be from, say, a dirty pan. This image here shows you perhaps more of a three-dimensional view of a micelle. So previously we just saw a two-dimensional view. You can see that there are many of these soap ions that can actually surround a nonpolar substance. Um, you can see it's extremely negatively charged around the outside, and that's also going to assist in its removal. Now typically, Nonpolar substances and stains don't just remove through the addition of soap and some water. You need to provide a little bit of agitation, so this is going to help encourage the micelle formation, and it helps also lift those nonpolar substances off from the surface. We can say that the micelles remain suspended in water, and as I pointed out before, they are highly negatively charged around the surface, and these micelles, which are all negatively charged, are going to repel one another, this is going to allow for them to remain within the solution and be washed away from the surface. So, like I mentioned before, it could be a dirty pan, it could be clothes, or it could be your skin. So that concludes part two of 3.9 triglycerides. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.